Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So I want to shoot this training video here for you because I want to share how you can actually profit from a recession. Because at this point in time, right, the S&P 500 has dropped, like, you know, 20 plus percent. Many investors, many traders, they are worried, right, whether, you know, the, the virus, right, the COVID virus, you know, will it affect the whole world? Is this just a pullback or is this something more to come? So here's the thing, right? We never know ahead of time whether it's going to be a pullback or a recession. If we can predict, right, we all be filthy, filthy rich. So whatever the case is, right, whether it's going to be a recession or not, this video here will prepare you for it. If it's a recession, great, right? Then you can use the techniques, concepts that I'm about to share with you, right, to profit from a recession. If it's just a pullback, no worries, right? A few years down the road, if there's a recession, you can also use this information, right, to your advantage. So here's what we'll cover in today's training. Number one, I want to share with you the truth about recessions that nobody tells you. Yes, right, a lot of gloom and doom out there, you know, business closing shops, uh, things are not going well, but amid this crisis period, amid this volatility, amid this, you know, uncertainty, there is money-making opportunity if you can spot it. And I, I want to share this with you. Number two, how to time the market during a recession so you can buy stocks with conviction and confidence, right? How do you know when is a good time to buy stocks in the markets, right? What if you, you buy a stock and the stock continues to drop further, right? Should you average into your losses? Should you cut your losses and stuff like that? How do you know when is the right time to buy? I want to share with you my own technique, right, on how I'm going to time the market. And number three, right, how to know what stocks to buy during a recession? What if you buy the wrong stocks and the stocks goes to zero? What if the stocks goes bankrupt because the economy is not doing well? Right, so how do you pick the right stocks, right, that have a greatest chance, right, of surviving a recession and even, you know, rallying, right, afterwards? And finally, right, how do you know when to sell your winners for maximum profits, right? You don't want to just, you know, sell and book a 10, 20% profit, when you get it during a recession. This is like the great Singapore sale, the great fire sale. You want to hold it, right, for maximum profits. And I want to share with you how to know when is the right time to sell your holdings, right? So all this and more in today's training. Let's get started. So the first thing that I want you to know about recession is that in the long run, stock markets, they are generally in a long-term uptrend. So what I'm about to share with you here is pretty much, right, a long-term chart of the S&P 500, right, tracks the US economy. And you can see that this chart, you can agree with me that it's in a long-term uptrend. No doubt we have pullbacks that you see over here on this chart along the way. You know, there's a slight pullback, a slight blip, pullback, pullback, you know, pullback, 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 pullback. We call this retracement. But when you are experiencing this in real time, right, some of you, right, would say that this is actually a recession, right, where the market actually, you know, corrects quite a bit, you know, 40, 50% or more. But one thing that we can agree that whenever the pullback ends, whenever the recession ends, the stock market tends to continue higher. It tends to break out of the previous high. So bear this in mind. In the long run, stock markets, they are in an uptrend, right? This is important. So this will give you conviction, right, to know that, hey, this is something that I want to be buying when prices are low. And we'll talk about when to buy later on. The message that I want to bring out to you in here is that recession, it will be over one day. Eventually, the markets will, will go back up and continue its uptrend. Next one, bear markets are short-lived, right? So I want to share this table here with you. If you look at the bear markets, how long it lasts, right? You can look at this column over here. Generally, you can agree that most bear markets, they are less than two years of duration, right? For example, the 08, 09 financial crisis, it lasted for one year and six months. That's about 20, uh, 18 months. The one before that around the uh, dot-com bubble is probably eight months or so, right? You can go back as far as the 1950s and stuff like that. Generally, most of them are less than two years, right? Of course, the Great Depression, this one is slightly longer, almost four years. But we can agree that bear markets are short-lived and this should make sense intuitively right? because if you look at the previous chart over here, you'll see that this retracement, 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 they are much shorter compared to this trending move over here, this trending move over here, this trending move over here. So bear markets, it's short-lived. Yes, it's painful. Yes, it's uncertain. Yes, volatility is high. But remember, it won't last forever. It's usually pretty short-lived, usually less than two years. Next one, the returns, right, after a bear market are usually pretty done good. And this again, right, it's, uh, it's all math, right? So if you look at this, some stats over here, right, during here is the, the recession, right, this column over here. And what happens after the recession, after one year, after three years, after five years? If you look at the numbers, right, after three years or after five years, you get pretty insane returns, right? after the market collapse, after a recession. So this should tell you that when the market is in a recession, when the market has correct 30, 40, 50%, this is where money-making opportunity lies. Right? This is where you want to be prepared to buy some stocks. And let me just work out some simple math with you. 
Okay, so for example, let's say the markets, right? Let's say the index, the S&P 500, let's say previously is trading at $100, for example, and it drops down to $50. At this point, the S&P 500 has lost 50% of its value, right? 100 to 50, it's a loss of 50%. But now, from 50% or from $50, let's say it goes back up to $100, how much is the gain? If you do the math, the gain is not 50%. The gain is 100%. So when something loses half in value, you need to regain 100% just to break even. And do you know what's the best part? The best part is this, right? If the S&P 500 drops 50%, most stocks out there, they won't drop just 50%. They will drop, you know, 70%, 80%, or even some 90% of their value. It tends to drop more than the S&P 500 because they have a larger beta, right? It's some technical term, but generally, right, a number of stocks will drop more than 50%. So for example, let's say a stock, it drops 80%. In value let's say a stock previously again hypothetically right hundred dollars then it drops down 80 percent the value now is twenty dollars now from twenty dollars to go back up to hundred dollars how many percent gain do you require if you do the, if you do the math okay if i'm not wrong you need a gain of four hundred percent just to get back to break even Okay, you need a return of 400% just to get back to break even. So let this let this sink in for a while because this tells you that the more a stock price drops, the greater the opportunity that lies. Okay, so this is important, right? The returns after a bear market are usually pretty darn favorable. So now, moving on. How do you time the markets? How do you know when is the right time to buy a stock? So I want to share with you a very simple technique that I use myself. Okay, what I like to do is look at the historical chart and see how the market has dropped previously. So for the S&P 500, previously in the dot-com bubble, it dropped about 50% from the highs. 0809 financial crisis is about 55, 56%. Right now, it's pretty much a question mark to how much it can potentially drop. So one thing we can agree, right, is that this market could possibly drop 40% percent or even 50 percent or more so this tells you that if you want to prepare for a recession you don't want to buy just because the market has dropped 10 percent or just because it dropped 20 percent because there's a good chance it could you know drop further to 40 or 50 percent so my game plan moving forward is this you want to enter you can do it in uh, what they call trenches so if the index drops 40 percent then you can use half of your allocate, allocated capital to buy stocks and if the index drops to 50%, you can use the remaining half to buy stocks. Because you, as you've seen, right, historically, the S&P, it drops 50% or 55%. It's almost near the bottom. But you can't guarantee it, right? You, the, the reason why I decided to you know, fire a bit when the S&P drops 40% is because sometimes it may not pull back 50%. Maybe it pulls back to 45%, maybe to 40%, and then it rallies and never looks back, and never look back. And if you are die die right you are just waiting at that 50 percent mark or waiting at the 60 percent mark you may not get filled and you might miss the opportunity of the decade so be flexible over here right you don't have to nail the bottom the exact bottom to make money <laughs> again just a very simple example let's say stock price drops from 100 down to let's say 20 dollars is a lower price but let's say you bought it not at 20 you got it at 30 or maybe not even 30 maybe you got it at 35 well does it matter you're still going to make money right when the stock rebounds so don't get too caught up with nailing the bottom, right? Because that mindset might actually cause you to miss the entire opportunity. So my guideline is again, right? If the index drops 40%, you can start, you know, buying some stocks, maybe about 50% of your allocated capital, not your entire wealth, your allocated capital, right? To take advantage of this crisis period. And if the index, let's say it does drop to 50% mark, then you can use the remaining half of your capital to buy more stocks. Make sense? So now brings us to the question, right? To this, right? How do we know what stocks to buy, right? There are so many stocks out there. In the US, there's like thousands of stocks, right? Which stocks to buy? So a few techniques to share with you. Number one, you can just Google, right? Uh, I bracket here, investor holding. So for example, what is investor? You can follow the most famous investor of all time, Warren Buffett. Just Google Warren Buffett Holdings and you will see something like this over here, right? I just Google it and it shows me pretty much all the holdings that Warren Buffett is currently holding. He says that it holds the American Airline Groups. It's a 10% stake. That's quite a lot. It has the Bank of America, it has Biogen, has uh, Delta Air, Globe Life, General Moto. So you can see his holdings, right? He sticks in all these different companies that he's holding in. And as you know, Warren Buffett is pretty much the greatest investor of all time. He has probably done his research 
uh, the fundamental of the companies, the management, right? And you can just kind of like, you know, uh, hop on and, I mean, right on his coattail, right? And take advantage of all the so-called hard work that he's done. This is one way to kind of, you know, pick quality stocks, right? That has been done for you by the world's greatest investor. That, that's the one technique you can use. And also pay attention to the stick that he, he has, right, in those companies because the greater the stick, right? The greater... In a way, you can see the greater the conviction he has in the company, right? So pay attention to the stick as well, right? 10% stick is definitely more significant than a 0.1% stick, okay? So that's one technique you can use. Number two, you can start to buy stocks that you believe in, right? What do I mean by believe in? So how stocks work is that in the long run, if they make money, right, the stock price will reflect according to it, right? So it's basically a barometer to how well a company is being run and managed and how profitable it is. So for me, personally, I believe in Google because five years from now, I believe, you know, search engine is still there. They are the biggest uh, player in the search engine market. I believe in Google. Maybe Amazon, right? I buy things from Amazon pretty done regularly. I believe they'll be here for the next five years. That's another company I believe in. Or if you like eating McDonald's, right? That's another company that you might believe in. Coca-Cola, I don't know, right? So whatever stocks that, you know, that, you have come across or maybe things that you use, you buy often, the service that you use, right? Think of those stocks in those lines, right? Do you believe in those stocks? Do you believe that they'll be there, right? Over the next five years? Do you think that they will survive the crisis? If you think it's a yes, then maybe those are some stocks that you want to consider. Alternatively, you can pick stocks from your country's index. I'm from Singapore, so I can just look up the STI and see which are the top 30 stocks and see which of these 30 stocks, right? I believe will still be around after this crisis. Maybe some bank stocks like UOB, OCBC, DBS. Or if from the US, it could be stocks like, you know, banks like, you know, Goldman Sachs. could be Microsoft. I don't know, right? So just look through your large cap stocks, right, in your country's index and see whether those stocks are something that you might believe in, right? And you might want to consider buying. So let's, you know, kind of talk a little bit about how do you know, right, how much to buy. So let's say you have 100K of allocated capital that you want to, to buy in this recession. So remember, I said that 40%, if the index drops 40%, right, you use half of it to buy the first uh, the first batch of stocks, right? So out of $50,000, you can start buying some stocks, right? Like maybe, you know, Amazon, Tesla, Google, Apple, whatever you want, right? Till you know, this $50,000 is used up. And if the index drops to 50% mark, you can fire off your remaining $50,000 and buy the remaining stocks that you want. Might be the similar stocks that you have bought previously, but now at a better price, or might be some other new stocks that, you know, you didn't manage to buy earlier. Again, it's all up to you. But this is pretty much what I'm sharing over here, right? When to buy and how much to buy. And again, my suggestion is you know, try to try to make things easier, right? If you have 100K of capital and let's say you want to buy 10 stocks, then simply put, right, $10,000 to each individual stock. You can get fanciful, you know, and, you know, overweight certain sectors and buy more stocks within that sector or buy more heavily towards that stock. But that's where, you know, the idiosyncratic risk comes in where you never know what the management of the, the company is really doing behind the scenes. You don't have such information. So my suggestion is just kind of like spread out your bets. You never know what happens. So there's some diversification there for you. Maybe you've got some banking sector, technology, you know, oil and stuff like that. So now that we have covered what stocks to buy, moving on. When do you sell? And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, right, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. This way I can share with you more practical trading tips, advice, and opportunities out there in the market. So do it right now and moving on, when to sell. So this is the question, right? I am not an investor at heart. I'm a trader at heart. So I'm not going to, you know, devour, you know, research paper, fundamental news of the company and see, you know, when's a good time to buy. So some guidelines to share with you, right, is that you can sell half of your holdings, right, when it reaches near the previous high. So let's say Amazon, you know, uh, before the crisis is trading at $1,000, for example, and crisis is dropped to a low of maybe $500 or $400. So when you buy at that price, right, and you rallies back near the previous high of about $1,000, you can sell half of it. And you keep the remaining half, right, because you have no idea, you know, how far this stock could go. Maybe, you know, the economy is going to a long-term bull market, right, all stocks are, are being lifted along the way. You have to kind of, you know, trail your stop loss, right, to, to right this trend, right, as long as possible. So what you can do is to sell the remaining 50% when the stock closes below the 200-week moving average. So this way, you're still giving it some buffer, right, to ride further upside if there is. But whatever the case is, right, half of it is kind of already in the bank, right? You already booked that profit, right? So that's technically, you know, risk-free to you if you want to call it, right? So what I'll do is that, again, I'm not a fundamental person. I'm not going to study research paper. I'm not going to, you know, read the quarterly earnings, right? I'm just going to follow simple technical analysis and write the stock, right? till it closes below the 200-week moving average, till the weekly candle closes below the 200-week moving average. That's just uh, my, my game plan. 
And final advice for you, right, is that, you know, this, I have no idea whether this is going to be rece- recession, whether, you know, you will be buying stocks over the next few weeks or next few months, right? So the most important thing here is that don't invest with money you can't afford to lose. You know, if you have bills to pay, you have a mortgage to pay, you have, you know, food to put on the table, right? Don't borrow money to invest. Don't borrow money to trade, right? Because just because I shared with you how I'm going to time the market, it doesn't mean that the market will bottom up at 50%. Who knows, it might go in further to 60, 70, 80%. I have no idea. And if that's the case, right, if you're borrowing or you're investing on margin, right, you're going to get margin call and you're going to, you know, sell all these quality companies, right, at a time that you you don't want to be selling because you're dealing or you're investing with money you can't afford to lose, right? So don't do that. Number two, don't sell too quickly. I know it can be tempting, right? Because in bear markets, right, the rallies are very quick and many investors, right, they buy at a really good price and the price goes up 20%, boom, they sell everything. They say, oh, wow, look at the amount of, you know, paper profits that I have, man. Oh, man, God, I'm so tempting to sell. Let me sell, sell, sell. And when they sell at 20%, guess what? The stock goes up another 200%. So don't let that happen to you. Don't sell too quickly. So the guidelines that I've shared with you earlier is meant to keep you holding those stocks, those winners for as long as possible. If you sell too quickly, right, then really, right, why go through all this emotional uh, uh, <laughs> trauma, you know, all this, you know, potential sleepless nights, right, if you're just going to book a 10-20% gain? Doesn't make sense, right? So don't sell too quickly. And finally, you don't have to nail the exact bottom to make money. Many investors, they I know, always trying to pick the exact bottom to make money, but as I've shared with you earlier, even if you don't enter a, let's say, at the absolute bottom, you enter, you know, 10, 20% around the bottom, right? When the stock rebound, the returns are still pretty done favorable. Okay, so don't focus on nailing the exact bottom, right? Then you end up missing the entire move, right? Don't focus on the trees that you miss the entire forest. All right? So a quick recap, right, to today's training. Number one, stock markets, they are in a long-term uptrend, as I've shared earlier. Bear markets, they are short-lived, usually, you know, two years or less. And they offer lucrative investing opportunities. Look to buy, right, when the index drop. 40% or more, right? So I've, I've done this based on anal- analyzing the S&P 500. If you are in Singapore, you can analyze the STI and see what's the, the depth of the drop, right? Whenever a recession occurs, if you're in the Philippines, you can do the same thing as well. India, same as well. You want to buy fundamentally sound companies, right? Don't buy penny stocks during recession, right? Because if that stock goes bankrupt, right? You lose everything. So focus on quality fundamental companies, companies that actually has earnings coming in, that actually makes a profit. And I shared with you right, a few techniques that you can use earlier to buy fundamentally sound companies, right? This is important, okay? And then look to sell half when the price is near the previous highs and then you can trail the remaining using the 200-week moving average. And finally, right, last word is that don't invest with money you can't afford to lose, don't sell too quickly and you don't have to nail the bottom, right, to make money in a recession. Is that all right? So with that said, I've come towards the end of today's training. I hope, you know, you you make some money out of this uh, recession or future recessions. And I wish you all the best and I'll talk to you soon.